What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are assembling January's PC of the month, the long awaited rig that I've been promising you guys all month. Uh, sorry it's a little bit late, it's almost February now, but I did get backed up after CES and all that stuff. So it's finally here though, in the flesh. I've got all the parts behind me, very exciting stuff. Uh, this is going to be a high-end Z270 gaming machine. So we're gonna be able to pump out some pretty decent frame rates at hyper 1080 resolutions. I wouldn't say 4K 60 on all the games. I would say some, some of the games definitely Yes, but for the most part, what we're looking at here is quad HD and ultra wide resolutions is pretty much your sweet spot. And we'll be able to push over six, well over 60 FPS at those resolutions, which is exciting to say the least. Now, if you guys are new to my PC of the month series, it's basically a two part video where, as the name suggests, every month I build a full blown system uh, that's centered around a use case scenario and or budget. And in part one of the series, which is what you're watching now for this rig, I basically go over all the parts that I'm using, give a little explanation, and then we kick it off with a nice time-lapse assembly. You can watch me build the damn thing. I look all super fast and there's cool music in the background. Makes me look awesome. And then we finish that off with some sexy B-roll. In part two, which should probably come within a week or two after this upload, uh, is when we'll really dive into the testing. That includes overclocking, gaming benchmarks, and we'll be also be looking at things like acoustics and temperature. So be sure to stay tuned for that. But on that note, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the parts that we're using for this high-end Z270 gaming machine. So taking a look at our case first, this is the Fantex Enthu Pro M mid-tower chassis for 120 bucks MSRP. This is a pretty freaking sweet deal here. I did opt for the uh, tempered glass side panel version and here it is. Don't be fooled by the box. Don't be fooled by the box. I think they just use the same acrylic uh, design for all their, their models. But if, if it is an acrylic panel and I pull this thing out, I will legit shit inside of this case. You guys know I'm prone to doing that too. Uh, but uh, sorry, also for, forgive the, uh, the nasty grease stains on the box. There's some weird grease issues going on in the back of my trunk in, in my car, uh, don't ask. But uh, this thing does have some pretty awesome radiator support as well, 360 on the top or the front. We're not, we're not gonna be putting a 360 in this thing today, but you do have that option available to you. There's also plenty of custom water cooling support and things like that. Additionally, we've got our CPU of the hour, the Core i7-7700K from Intel. This is part of their seventh generation KB Lake family. It is their flagship model within that lineup. And it's an overclocker. It's an overclock beast. You can push this thing all the way up to five gigahertz and then some if you know what you're doing and you have the proper cooling in place. Uh, so I'm really excited to be using this again. I've been using it quite a bit on the channel. Uh, I'm not tired of it quite yet. So that's gonna be having to be cooled though pretty, pretty significantly by a decent liquid cooler here. So we have the Kraken X62 from NZX. It's a 280 millimeter rad, so I thought, you know, what the hell? I, I've been doing a lot of 240 millimeter rads lately, and this thing is such a, a damn heat monster. It does get pretty hot when you're overclocking it to the extreme. So 280 millimeters should give us just a bit more room uh, for, for thermal headroom and things like that. Some more dissipation than than what we might ordinarily have on a 240 rad. Also, we've got our memory kit here, our RAMs, our RAM sauce, the Rip Jaws 5 from JScale. This is a 16 gigabyte kit of DDR4, of course, at 16, no, 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 wow, wow, 1600, what is this? What is this, a freaking Sandy Bridge video? No, this is 3000 megahertz, yo. This is freaking 2017, bitches. The RAM kit's gonna be paired with this motherboard. Uh, this is also a beast of a motherboard. This is the Asus Tough Z270 Mark I. And uh, when Asus sent this to me, I immediately opened it up and I was like, oh, showing, yeah, yeah. Uh, gave me a straight up chub. And as you know, it features Asus Aura Sync and all that stuff. It's got thermal armor, which is very uh, unique feature to the tough series of motherboards and uh yeah should be should be pretty kick ass i think it's gonna look really sick in the n2 pro m now the graphics card we're using for this build is basically our bread and butter for this whole system it is the star of the show for the most part it's the evga gtx 1080 hybrid uh which as most of you guys know features a built-in 120 millimeter liquid aio unit on top of it integrated pump and all that stuff so it's good to go it's it's completely water cooled out of the box and a base clock of 1860 megahertz, I believe. Uh, you know, you got the typical eight gigs of GDDR5X memory um, and all that good stuff. VR ready, of course. Uh, it'll to totally crush anything VR related for sure. Uh, you could probably even do, like I said earlier, maybe some 4K60 gaming, depending on the game, but uh, it's, it's gonna just haul ass in our tests. I, I can't wait to actually get this thing in the system. I have never, I've never tried out one of these firsthand, so this is gonna be another first for me. Uh, looking forward to seeing what kind of overclocks we can hit on it and uh, what kind of frame rates that will yield. We've also got some really nice storage options for today's build. This is the Hellfire NVMe SSD M.2 drive from Patriot. This is a 480 gig model, so we'll have plenty of storage for our operating system, which will be Windows 10 64 bit, of course, as well as all of our games and applications. I mean, I wouldn't say all of our games, but there's definitely a lot of room here uh, to install at least a couple AAA games for really fast loading times and uh, getting into your games and your maps very quickly. Uh, there's also, what, what is this, 
two, 2.5 gigabytes a second, I believe, for, for reads and 1.2 gigabytes thereabouts a second for writes. So very fast indeed. It's got a Fison uh, 5007 controller, I believe, which just sounds fast and badass, and I'm sure it is uh, gonna be plenty fast for our needs today. We've also got a one terabyte, where are you? A one terabyte WD Black. I thought I had a two terabyte on me, but I don't, apparently. So we're gonna be using this one terabyte today. Let it be known that if, it, if this was my personal build, I would have definitely upgraded this to a two terabyte um, uh, hard drive, just because I've got quite a few games nowadays, and they're getting bigger and bigger every day. So, uh, but that's gonna be plenty fine for, for this build. We've also got the EVGA Supernova 650 watt G2, fully modular, fully modular, I can't talk anymore, fully modular, take a breath, Cal, fully modular, unit 80 plus gold certified, very good certification rating, tons of uh, efficiency and all that jazz. It's got a really nice warranty, I believe, as well. Fans, we're, we're gonna be installing some uh, third-party fans here from Corsair. This is their ML140 Pros. We've got four of them to deal with, uh, to, to uh, work with today, I should say. Not to deal, we've gotta deal with these fans. These are their, their very nice uh, magnetic levitation fans that I did get to check out at uh, Computex last year. I hear that they're pretty quiet, and the really nice thing is that they're kind of balanced for airflow and static pressure. So you could either use them as case fans or radiator fans. So depending on how things are looking, I might actually slap some of these on to the Kraken X62. Not just because, you know, not that I don't have any faith in, in the, uh, the NZXT fans or anything, but just maybe to, to give it a little bit more of a personal touch um, to customize it a bit. And maybe maybe these will be a little bit quieter. I'm not sure, we'll, we'll, we'll test it out and stuff. I also really like the way they look. So it is a bit of an aesthetic thing for me as well. Last but not least, we've got the uh, the EVGA Powerlink. The Powerlink, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. Jade did a really good video on it. Um, it's a uh, it's, it's really cool little, uh, little unit that you can actually attach to the front or the, the uh, PCIe connectors of your graphics card and allows you to plug in your cables from the side of the graphics card instead of the front, just give, give it a nice clean look overall. The front of this thing looks really, really slick, and I will be using it it's in tandem today with these Fantex pre-sleeved cables in black. Uh, the 24 pin is not shown right now, but I will be using that as well. Uh, I think the power link is gonna be cool, especially since I've never used it before. Pretty excited to be using all of that. So on that note, guys, I think uh, those are all the parts. Did I miss anything? No, nope. looks, looks, looks pretty good. So now you can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the time-lapse as I assemble this collection of badassery. Here we go.
so here she is, folks. Woo, looking good, I must say. Holy moly, by the way, I'm going handheld now, so forgive any shakiness that may occur, but uh, this is looking pretty sweet. I'm really happy with how this turned out. The one thing that I'll say is sticking out right now is the orange LED on the uh, motherboard here, on the TUF motherboard, but that is RGB, so once we load up Windows 10, we can jump into the software and either disable it or change it to white, something that's a bit more matchy-matchy. But apart from that, looking pretty good. Really loving how the fans turned out as well. Uh, they look pretty sweet in this chassis with everything else. Uh, the one thing that I will say that you might have noticed, there were a couple changes that I made along the way during the time lapse that uh, were not addressed at the beginning of the video. First of which was the ramp. So instead of using the Ripjaws uh, 4, or sorry, Ripjaws 5, from G-Skill, I swapped those out for some Dom Platts from Corsair. Uh, also a 16 gigabyte kit at 3000 megahertz, but I just felt that there was nothing silver in the build to match the, the silver accent on the GPU shroud here. So I wanted to uh, kind of make it a bit more cohesive. So this is mainly just for aesthetic purposes. I threw in a bit more silver into the build overall, and I think it was a good choice. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that decision because I think it just ties everything together a little bit nicer. Um, so yeah, that was that was one thing. The other thing is uh, I can address the, uh, the radiator configuration here and how I set that up. So I got the CPU AIO, um, which is uh, at the front of the case as an intake. This is in push-pull. So I've got the, the stock NZXT fans on the front that you can't really see. Uh, and then I've got the, the two of the ML 140s uh, right there, breathing fresh air into the chassis. And then we've also got the, uh, the GPU AIO, which is mounted to the back of the case as an exhaust. Now, one concern I might have uh, when I was looking at this after I built it was if there's if, if the two exhaust fans up here the ML 140s up top are going to be stealing any airflow for, from the uh, from the radiator back here for our GPU so as the air comes in I'm hoping that it doesn't get sucked up and exhausted before it ever reaches the rad and I'm going to be, be doing some testing on that perhaps in part two of this video or maybe it, it's worth a standalone video maybe I won't include it in part two and I'll just do a separate video on it altogether let me get let me know what you guys think so the other thing I wanted to mention is the hard drive I completely overlooked the fact that if you're installing a 280 rad at the front of this case then you lose pretty much you have to uninstall the hard drive cage that's down there which which houses two three and a half inch mechanicals uh, natively so I had to remove that and I was like shit well where, where do I put my mechanical drive so what I ended up doing was just mounting it by chance there's happened to be two slots at the bottom of the case um, for, uh, for for mounting a pump. It's where your pump mount would go for custom water cooling. It's not meant for hard drives at all, but somehow I managed to get two screws in there uh, and kind of bolt it down. How, however, I wasn't able to get the, uh, the uh, whatchamacallit, the, the hard drive completely flush with the bottom of the chassis because there were four of uh, those SSD screws, basically four of these things, four of these bad boys, because you can mount the SSD tray either here or at the bottom of the case or behind the motherboard. So there was a quad of, of those at the bottom of the case. So the, the hard drive is actually resting on top of it, which looks a little awkward, but it actually kind of worked out because it's still really stable. And it also kind of prov provides just a little bit of lift at the end of that hard drive. So it's a bit easier to connect like the SATA cables and stuff like that. So I was pretty happy with how that turned out. I don't think it's too big of an issue. But um, apart from that, it's looking pretty good. The only thing you can't really see apart from the hard drive is the SSD, the M.2 Patriot Hellfire in there, but it went in like a champ, went in like a charm, and uh, it's kind of covered up by the shroud that's on the tough motherboard. But um, I think that's that's pretty much all I wanted to say. This is a pretty solid build. It went very smoothly. Of course, of course, there's like any build, there's a couple of workarounds that you have to kind of improvise with, but I'm very satisfied with it overall. You guys let me know what you think about it in the comments, and if you think you're, if, let me know if it's a refreshing change to see a system that's not just riddled with RGB LEDs, because I'm pretty, I'm pretty sick of that for, for, for at least for a while. Uh, but that is going to do it for now, guys. I didn't really plan out how I was going to frame the shot, so I'm kind of like crouching right now. It's a very awkward camera angle. Hopefully, you'll forgive me. And it's also a little bright. Let me turn that down. Yeah. Yeah, but that's gonna do it for now guys. Thank you very much for watching and also thanks to my sponsors who set this up G-Skill is not a sponsor by the way So I didn't like dick them over by swapping in the Corsair modules um, Just in case you were wondering, but uh, that's gonna do it now toss me a like and all that jazz Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already part two coming very soon I promise I will get around to that sooner than I did this initial part one um, and uh, February is around the corner So stay tuned for February's PC of the month as well on top of all the other tech stuff that I've got going on on the channel. I love you guys. I, I don't even want to go right now. I'm, just, I'm gonna miss you so much. <laughs> I don't, I'm just kidding. Bye guys.